Great to see you again, Turbo Girl. Hello, teacher. Look at these two strips of paper. They're exactly the same size. I am going to cut the first strip of paper into four parts and the second strip of paper into five parts. Hmm. So each part will be a fraction. That's right. Can you tell me what is the fraction of this piece? Each piece is one out of four, so it is one quarter. Good. Let me write the fraction on every quarter. Now, can you tell me what is the fraction of this piece? Each piece is one out of five, so it is one fifth. Good. I will label the fraction on them too. Then I'm going to turn them over and mix them all up, and you have to put them back into two separate holes again. But, but I can't see the fraction written on them. How am I going to sort them out? There are nine pieces of paper here. Since teacher has cut the first strip into four pieces, that should be four pieces of the same size. The other remaining five pieces should be of another size. These four pieces make one whole, and these five other pieces make another one whole. Very good. Indeed, four quarters make one whole. Similarly, five fifths make one whole too. Let's just look at the quarters now. I'm coloring one quarter blue and leaving the remaining parts white. Can you tell what fraction is the remaining part? One, two, three, three quarters. So you can see from here that one quarter and three quarters make one whole. Can you rearrange the fractions to make a whole? I will color another quarter blue. Now, two quarters and two quarters make one whole. Good. Tell me what do you notice from the fractions one quarter, two quarter, and three quarters. Hmm, they have the same denominator four. We have a name for such fractions. They are called like fractions. From the same whole, which is cut into equal parts, we can get like fractions. Turbo girl, can you make use of this other strip, which cut into five equal parts, to tell me about like fractions? I will try. If I color one part of it green and leave the rest white, I get one fifth and four fifth, which make one whole. One fifth and four fifth are like fractions, as they have the same denominator and they come from the same whole. Very good. Do you think I'm right if I say that two seventh and six seventh are like fractions? Yes, they have the same denominator seven. Let me show you something. To get two seventh, we have to cut a hole into seven parts and take two parts. And to get six seventh, we also cut a hole into seven parts and we take six parts. Now take a part from two seventh and match it with a part from six seventh. What do you see? Hey, they are of the same size. Of course, these fractions are cut from holes of the same size. I'm sure now you know what are like fractions. I do, teacher. Hey, Turbo Girl, do you like origami? What is origami? Well, origami is paper folding, like this crane which I folded from a piece of paper. It's beautiful. Well, you can learn origami too. However, it will be good if you learn to fold a piece of paper into various numbers of folds. Okay. Why don't you start by folding this piece of paper into two? Done. It is now folded into two parts. Good. So one whole is half plus half, which is two over two. Can you fold the same piece of paper into four? Sure. I fold it into two like before, and then into two again. The paper is now folded into four parts. Each part is one quarter, so one quarter plus one quarter 
plus one quarter plus one quarter, which is four quarters, make one whole. You are a fast learner. Can you fold the same piece of paper into sixteen parts? Of course. I fold it four times like this, and I will get sixteen equal parts. Now, sixteen sixteenths makes one whole. Well done. A piece of paper can be folded into different numbers of folds to get many parts. When folded once, we get two parts. To get four parts, we fold it twice. Thus, we can see that one whole can be represented as two parts, four parts, and even as sixteen parts. So, when both numbers are the same in a fraction, such as five fifths, the fraction is equal to one whole. Yes, double girl. In five fifth, the fraction represents five fifths. When I put five one fifth together, we get one whole. I see. I think I understand fractions better now. Turbo Go, you claim that you now understand fractions better. Let me test you. Look at this fraction, which is a part of a whole. Can you tell me how many parts are there in the whole? No problem. One six represents one part out of six equal parts. Therefore, the whole should be made up of six parts. Very good. What about this fraction? How many quarters do we need to make a whole? Four quarters. Looking at these slices of pizza, I feel real hungry. If you only have a slice of pizza, from which hole would you take a slice? I will take a slice from the pizza, which is cut into four. The slices are bigger than those of the other pizza. Yes. So which fraction is bigger? One quarter or one six? One quarter is bigger than one six. Good. What about these fractions? Which one is smaller? Well, half represents one part out of two parts, while one ninth represents one part out of nine parts. Each part is smaller when the whole is divided into more parts, so one ninth is smaller than half. Good thinking. Well, as you can see, if the number on the top for both fractions is one, we know that they are unit fractions. That means it is one part out of a whole. The number at the bottom represents the number of parts in the whole. So the bigger the number, the more parts the whole is cut into. Hmm. That means the bigger the number at the bottom of the fraction, the smaller the unit fraction. For example, one third is bigger than one seventh, and one eighth is smaller than one fifth. Yes. So, can you arrange the fractions which you have just mentioned from the biggest to the smallest? No problem. One third, one fifth, one seventh, and one eighth. Am I right? Absolutely, Turbo Girl. We have come to the end of today's lesson. From today's lesson, I realized that a whole can be represented in many different ways. For example, six sixths is a whole, and so is nine ninths. Therefore, fractions like one six and four six come from the same whole as each part is of the same size. I have also learned to compare unit fractions. The number on the top of a unit fraction is always one. The number at the bottom represents the number of parts in the whole. So the bigger the number at the bottom of the fraction, the smaller is the unit fraction. Very good, Turbo Girl. Glad that you can remember all that you've learned today. See you again.